Well, I'm <clears throat> just going to pray again really fast. Not fast, but fast enough for me. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity of fellowship with one another. We ask that this word goes forth, that this clay body decrease and you increase in him. In me, Father, and I pray, Lord God, that the ears to hear this word, that they live with it today, live with it, leave with it, love it, and love you more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we already just understood that we're talking about the Beatitudes, so we're going to talk about truth. And uh, in St. John, I have my notes here, so bear with me because I'm, I'm a little nervous, I must admit. But in St. John chapter 8, verse 32, in your Bibles, that's on page um, 931. And it says, he was, he was talking to the Jews, and he was telling the Jews that if you believe in me, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now sometimes, not only will the truth make you free, but the truth can also make some people mad. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that, exact, that was exactly what's going on uh, at this time with Jesus. You see, if you read in the chapters before that, Jesus was just starting his ministry. He had just come down from being tempted by the devil. He had overcome him. He, and the devil, now he was like, people were being delivered. The sick was being healed. Demons were being cast out. So there was this change that was taking place. And people had never seen this type of power from exhibited by anyone before because at the time, the religious people weren't doing that. And number two, God wasn't talking. He was silent for like 400 years between the Old Testament and New Testament. So they didn't know what was going on. All they had at that time was the law of Moses, which was good in and of itself, but this was something new and something more. You see, the religious people at the time were the Pharisees, and they were not fair, you see. And <laughs> the reality of it was the Pharisees, their job was to keep the whole law of Moses. So that, that means they follow people around. Ha -ha, you're not doing that. Ha -ha, you're not doing that right. They were, there was the ritual part of it. But they were also in charge of the money. We all know what happens when some people get around money. They lose their mind. So these are the guys that were responsible for that. We also had the Sadducees, and they were sad, you see. <laughs> Interesting fun fact, though, the Pharisees, if you looked at a fair word up Pharisees, it means separated ones. Now, they thought, I'm sure, with them meaning, the meaning of separated ones, that they were separate from the people. They were, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, I'm holier than you and you and you and you, but they were not. They were actually separated from the message of God that was coming, which was Jesus in the flesh. So they missed out. Now, the Sadducees, they only believed in the first five books of the Bible. You know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, that whole thing. They didn't believe in the resurrection at all. Boy, were they in for a shock later on. <laughs> because that's exactly what Jesus did. He came back. Now what you're going to say? So you have the scribes. These were the people that were writing down the word. <clears throat> and their interpretation of the word was what was being presented to the people. Now, you know some people, when they have the power of the pen, let's just say the truth is in the beholder of the pen. So they would write down some truth, I'm sure, but I'm sure they would add some things to and take away some things because they wanted to keep the people in line. See, this, this, this system had been working for a long time. And what happened, the law of Moses came to give the people instruction, direction, and righteousness. But then you get people that, when they didn't hear anything from God, there was no prophets coming along, there were no Red Seas being parted, no manna from falling from heaven, no supernatural things happening because they were, the Rome was in charge at this time. They were just finding their own righteousness within what God had established to be righteous. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Sometimes you can take, some people can give you instruction, and you can take that instruction and then interpret it the way that you want to interpret it and make it your own thing, but it's not what it really was supposed to be. And that's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes were doing. And also you had the Herodians. Now the Herodians were affluent Jews who were in the kingdom of Herod at the time, 
And they loved the Greek customs, but they also loved the Roman law. And ironically, they were with the Sadducees, but then somehow they got tied up in the plot with the Pharisees to kill Jesus later on. They was all confused, I'm sure. I, I don't know what they were doing. But the, the point I'm saying is this here. When you try to develop your own righteousness, you end up falling short. And on, in Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 4, that's on page 985. See, I came prepared for you all today. He said that, and I, I'm going to read it because I, I want you to understand that, you know, Apostle Paul understood this. And he wasn't even around when Jesus was walking. He, he actually got his understanding from the Spirit after Jesus had already left. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. That's what I said. It says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. He's talking about Israel. I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God, which is Jesus, and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to, the, to God's righteousness, which is Jesus. For Christ is the end of the law that everyone who has faith may be justified. That's why we're all here, because we believe in what Jesus did. But they couldn't receive that because they were too busy trying to do their own thing. Um, I'm always reminded when I, my kids sometimes, you know, they fall outside of the guidelines that we establish, not to crush them because they're learning. Because for the most part, they're really good kids. See, I'm giving them some love right now. They're going to use that against me later on. <laughs> but that's the same thing God was trying to do. He's trying to bring people back to himself. But the reason that he, the way that he does that is through love, not through beating people and rituals and you better look like this and dress like this and act like this. And if you don't, you don't love the Lord. That's not how he operates. He operates from the standpoint of love. He draws you in with love. He embraces you with love. You grow with love. You learn because of the love. Anybody that's in a loving relationship, trust me, you understand that you learn, learn to love that person more when you know more about them. That requires some study. That requires some spending time. And that's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees weren't doing at the time. You see, Jesus was coming on the scene to tell them, listen, no, that's not right. And the people that were receiving what he was saying, their hearts and their minds and their spirits were being delivered. And they were being set free. They had never heard this before. Because all they had was, "Do thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Well, if that's all you do, people don't feel like, well, you know what? If I'm not good enough, I might as well run all the way to the other side and just throw myself into the, to the garbage dump because I'm not worthy to receive the love according to the way you're presenting it. And God had got tired of the oxen and the bulls and the doves and all of that stuff that was established in the law. That's why he sent his son, Jesus. Because over in Matthew chapter 5, once again, I got a number written down, 838, look at that. He said, and this is Jesus talking, he said that, in verses uh, 17 through 20, he says, Think that not that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, fill, till heaven and earth pass away, not one iota, not a dot will pass from the law until it, is all, until it is accomplished. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them and teaches them shall be called great in heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, he's already saying it, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, on the flip side of this is the angry people. They're going, wait a minute. I'm walking around with the robe. I fast. I pray. I collect the money. I enforce the law. What you mean I'm not going to get into the kingdom? That's what Jesus said. That's what he said. So when, he's op when they're operating from that standpoint, they, they're like, wait a minute, well, how, how are, who are you to tell us that? Who are you? He was the son of God, and they didn't understand that. So when I'm reading the scripture, I like to put myself in the scripture. 
And this is how I come to understand it. It's kind of, might be a little out there, but bear with me, ride with me a little bit. If you rent or buy a car, whatever car that is, you don't think about that car, you just go and get it, right? Unless you do the, the numbers and it's a certain brand of car you like. But even when you do that, you don't really think about it until you're driving down the street and all of a sudden you see a car in red, you see that same car in white, you see the same car in blue. Kids be pointed out, hey, they got a car like ours, mom. They got a car like ours, dad. That's how the truth was popping up in the garden of the people's hearts and minds because they started to see it. They started to feel it. The, the, Sarah, the, the, people, the religious people at the time couldn't explain all the things that Jesus was doing away. They couldn't just discredit it because lives were being changed and people were being free. And at the end of it all, and at the end of it all, they went back and told more people and more people came. And all of a sudden now, people that had been way on the other side of the region because they didn't have you know, phones and internet at the time, they had word of mouth. So as a result of that, having that word of mouth, when people were receiving this message for the first time, you know what they said? Say what? Be blessed. Thank you for having me today.